diverse talent, adaptability, and an ability to think a few steps ahead. These are traits Singapore's public service needs, says Minister in Charge Chan Chun Singh, as he outlines how public servants must operate in the new normal. He adds that such qualities are vital amid global uncertainties made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic. Deborah Wong with this report. As we start to recover from the pandemic, will we be expecting any major overhauls to the organisation, like let's say recruitment uh, from more alternative pathways or even uh, more partnerships with the private sector? Can we expect that to happen? The crisis has uh, reaffirmed many of the things that we have been doing in the public service, but at the same time it has also reinforced uh, some of the things, the need for us to do and exert rate some of the things that we are doing and that includes uh, getting people from as diverse a background as possible and then developing them with as diverse a portfolio of skill sets and experience as possible because you never really know what is the next thing that might happen to Singapore. We will also have to double down to make sure that we constantly take two steps ahead of the rest to make sure that our structures continue to be agile. But it's, it goes beyond structures. It is actually the mindset of our people to be agile. Agile to take on new challenges, agile to configure our processes in different ways that we can serve our people and country better. So you mentioned agility. Now that is a startup mindset. But there is this expectation uh, for the public service to you know, be steadfast. One has this term called regulatory agility. When MAS came up with the regulatory sandboxes, they need to ensure the overall stability of the financial system. Yet at the same time, they need to have spaces to allow different people with different ideas to experiment, to try out. And if it works, and then they can proliferate to the wider system. So this is the tension and the balance that we need to seek. We need to have regulations to make sure there's current system work, but we also need to have regulations that enable new things to evolve. So there have been calls for the government to be more transparent with data. Do you think that the public service can be more forthcoming with this to uh, facilitate effective debates in parliament? Yes, I think that is an ongoing journey. So if we look at the amount of data that uh, the Department of Statistics or other agencies have provided for the public is actually uh, expanding uh, continuously. And the question is not just about how much data is given out there. It is also about helping the public to make sense of the data, interpret it, use it, analyze it, process it in ways that will help to build a better country for us. And that journey will be continuing as well. So in the most recent parliament sitting, opposition members so William actually brought up you know, the fact that there could be structural lapses in, in the way the Trace Together issue was communicated. Uh, do you think clarity is also something that could be improved on? Well, that is always a work in progress because uh, we obviously will want to communicate clearer. We want to make sure that our policies are sharper and yet easier to execute, easier to understand. So that is a evergreen work. There's never ending pursuit of excellence. And that's part of the public service ethos which is to constantly improve things for Singapore and Singaporeans. So it's, it's a work that we will keep doing and keep improving on. And there's never a, a, a stop or an end point for this kind of work. With every transformation comes a new set of goals, a new set of KPIs. How will you assess your team? So I always uh, would caution against uh, judging our achievements or accomplishments only for the measure them from the short term, we need to take a long-term perspective. We never define our success by how well we do for this generation only. We always define our success by how well we enable the next generation to do even better than us. And that is, I think, the spirit of the Singapore Public Service, and I hope that is also the spirit for all Singaporeans. In raising the example of agility, Mr Chan noted how the Social and Family Development Ministry worked with the social service partners to ensure every vulnerable household received food even when supply chains were down. Businesses too are not left behind as programs were rolled out to help them survive the crisis. We do basically performance tuning. We customers there by according to our weight, their size. You can't just open a shop like every other shop. You have to bring something different. Big plans. But when Shahir Rajir opened his motorcycle garage in August, it was to a sputtering start. The pandemic had affected his business badly. That's when he got a call from local startup Carousel to go digital, under a scheme by Enterprise Singapore. I had my products, whatever products I have, I just marketize in Carousel and all those things. So I got a lot of inquiry. And after that, it's easier for me to bring the customers to the shop. 
The result? A 40% jump in customers. One reason his garage is picking up speed, this public servant who's on a two-year stint at Carousel. The next stage of public service delivery is really about how we can uh, better partner the private and people sector to really uh, supercharge public service delivery. This real clear, uh, strong bias for action in understanding citizens' needs. This whole idea that uh, we're always willing to actually fail fast and fail forward pursuing like public service innovation and to keep iterating until we get it right. Kaitie is one of many public servants on private sector attachments. More are in the pipeline as the public service seeks new ways of working. But in reality, can all best practices be adopted? Structurally, right, it's also that there are certain, um, there, there are certain parts whereby um, you, pro you, you have a little bit more hesitance to fence because uh, the government really does look after like 5.6 billion uh, population, right? But there are certain pockets we can actually try to do certain kinds of innovation with it, like regulatory sandboxes. And the benefits are mutual. With public officers actually being in a startup directly, learning the inner workings of a startup, the challenges that we face, I think that can help better inform the policies and programs that they create to nurture a very nascent and vibrant startup ecosystem, which I think will help startups like us and, and many others go a long way.